Well, all right. My name is Jacob Gaines, and I'm thankful to be here today. Um, I got to say, I, I've been married for over a year now to the most beautiful woman in the world, awesome. Erin. And um, that's like the best part of my story right there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would like to share my story with you. I didn't have a normal upbringing like many of you, but some still identify with this story. My parents had a struggle with substance abuse, which led to these circumstances in my life that I'm going to share. I am the youngest of three boys. Growing up, things were pretty normal. I had toys. I went to school, played with my brothers. Life was great. Uh, my parents were religious. They taught us about Jesus when we were young, but we rarely went to church. My parents owned a construction company, and we always spent time as a family. Life was good. My parents deeply loved our family, but life circumstances dealt them a tough blow. And one day, life changed. And it was actually just like that. Life just changed. Around 1998, my parents lost their construction company, which made us lose our house, causing us to move. Because of our constant moving and our parents' struggle, my, my parents removed us from public school. Life changed. Over the next seven years, my family and I moved so many times that I lost count, but it was well over 10 times. The majority of that time, we lived in motels. No friends, no stability. These years growing up were very challenging for all of us. My parents' struggle caused a lot of pain and hurt to them, and it also caused a lot of stress and, stress and pain to my brothers and me. Normal life for my brothers and I was just staying home alone all day with our PlayStation and a TV. We didn't go to school. We didn't have a social life beyond the three of us. The worst was when we didn't know where our parents were, and we would stay up late worried and scared that our parents may not come back home because they would be gone for days at a time. To cope with this stress, I gained a dependence on pornography. At that time, I didn't know why I found myself looking at these images for hours. It wasn't until later in life that I discovered my dependence on porn had less to do with the nude images, but like so many people, more to do with my emotional numbing out. That dependence of porn, of porn led to poor decision making and ruining relationships later on in my life, which caused a lot of pain. My porn dependence went on until my early 20s, and until I went and got counseling and to deal with those hurts in my life. So back when I was a kid, in that time, I didn't go to school. I didn't even learn how to read until I was 12, until my older brother Isaiah helped me. By the time I was 14, I had an educational level of maybe a fifth grader, which was at least four years behind. Because my parents were usually gone for days at a time, there were times that my brothers and I would be at the motel scared because motel management was knocking on the doors, ready to kick us out because rent wasn't paid and we didn't know where our parents were. But in God's providence, one of the motels we lived, we lived in was off Independence Boulevard which is walking distance from the Mount Trashmore YMCA in a place called Vineyard Community Church. So my family joined the Y with their Hope and Hands program. My brothers and I would walk to the Y every Thursday and Friday, and we would see tons of youth in the church parking lot. My parents dropped into the Vineyard a few times, but never regularly. One day, the youth pastor invited us to come to a Thursday night youth service, and so we took him up on that, and my brother Isaiah and I went to church. That night, at the end of the message, the pastor invited people to come up front to receive Jesus as their Savior. While I've heard about Jesus, I didn't know that I could know him and the power that Jesus offered me until that night. I wanted to go up front, but I was scared because I didn't know what my brother would think about me. But while I was scared, my brother Isaiah was brave, and he nudged me to go up front with him. And we both did it together, and we gave our lives to Jesus together that night awesome. It was like God's grace found me, that everything in my life led to that moment so I could experience God's love. And that was the beginning of a changed life for me. Isaiah and I instantly joined the youth internship program, which is a year-long program that helps students learn how to pray, read the Bible, and serve in the church. We met awesome friends who saw God potential in our lives. They believed in me in ways that I never believed in myself. Now, I wish I was able to say that life became perfect after that, but it didn't. My parents still had their struggles, and my family moved three more times, which continued to be tough for me. But the difference this time is when I was going through these problems, I had more joy. I had faith that God would provide for me. 
I had hope that God had a good plan for my life, which was found in my relationship with Jesus. Jesus didn't come in and fix everything in my life, but he gave me a new perspective on my life. No longer did I feel like a slave to my sins or problems, but I felt like a son, that my God was bigger than my circumstances. At the age of 17, I moved out with my brother Isaiah in a house that would be eventually filled with seven guys and a dog, which is <laughs> pretty cool. Um, my church family rallied behind me and took time to help me study as I got my GED at the age of 20 after failing the test four times. Yes, and these, that was hard. Math is from the devil. Uh, <laughs> even though I had a lot of great things in my life, I still struggled with insecurity of being abandoned, not loved, and rejected. On a lunch break at my job in Portsmouth, I ran into a homeless man who asked for money, and I told him that I would buy him lunch instead. I went inside after buying him lunch and gave him his food, and at that moment, I felt like God told me to pray for this man, and I did. And in that interchange, I gained a new perspective. I needed to let go of the insecurities that weighed me down because I used to be like this homeless man, hopeless and stuck in a bad situation. But now God was using me to help people and relate to their difficult situations. In particular, I see God using me to reach misguided youth. I work with many youth that came from similar situations and even worse upbringings than me. I discovered, I discovered my purpose. God is now using me to encourage and help people who have been through tough circumstances in life. I went through a process of forgiving my parents and realizing that in many ways they were victims. And to this day, I actually have a very good relationship with my parents. Releasing bitterness towards people who have hurt me and learning how to live in God's freedom. And I would like to close with my favorite verse in the Bible, Philippians 1.19. I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I live in courage every day because how amazing God's grace is on my life. And I encourage you to allow God to heal the broken places in your life and in return, help others. Thank you. Hallelujah.